Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, weekend's video for the week ending the 22nd day of February 2013. Within today's video, looking at uh, five different time frames on the silver market and this time going from shortest time frame to longest. These are the five time frames that will be being covered. Take a look at some Fibonacci upside and downside calculations and I can quickly calculate them on a spreadsheet, which is what I'll be using, a very quickly made spreadsheet. This way we can take a look at some key levels uh, within uh, the current range and where it might break out or down to. And then finish it off within the gold to silver ratio one time frame, which is a 62 hour chart going back to the start of 2012. That's, let's get it started within the hourly silver chart. And within this, we uh, can see, obviously, the downtrend that occurred uh, last week, uh, breaking, breaking down below 30. As a big move was uh, subjected to take place, uh, definitely that did occur. Now, when I see a downtrend and I'm looking for a reversal pattern, you can see this declining 18 average band. You break out of it, establish a resistance field, come back down to the band, and then break resistance is really one of the steps needed to do so. Resistance wasn't broken within here. And of course, there's the big red candle, really two periods, bringing it back down to the lower end of this range. And now, of course, this is telling us that uh, it's probably either going to go in the sideways direction or continue yet another leg lower. The Fibonacci retracement that I am using is from the lows of 2824 and or yeah 2828 actually excuse me and the highs of 3247. Now I've got some large Fibonacci numbers this way. When I later on show a chart, you can see the exact uh, golden ratio of 61.8 uh, 61.8 you'll see it 8033 percent. But anyway. The first level here that I'm looking at is the 14.6% level, which has now been resistance on two occasions. If it's taken out, the next upside target is in that of 29.22. Right now, the next downside target is pretty much the previous low of 28.28. Moving on to the uh, six-hour time frame, the Fibonacci retracement will be the same, but we'll actually take a look at the 32.50 high. So the last one-sixth of the chart will contain the sideways down move, sideways down, and sideways move. Let's uh, bring it in now. So the last sixth of the chart, there's a sideways down, sideways up. There's that same move in here. And within this moving average, the 18 average has been resistance on multiple times, countless lower highs and lower lows. We've already given the 14.6 and 23.6 numbers. Therefore, the 38.2 number, there's the exact Fibonacci percentages to that many decimals. 29.81 and then 30.82. And the next chart will be the 24 hour chart, which is pretty much the daily chart, but I can't use the daily to have the big high of 35.40 placed last fall. So therefore, I'm going to use the 24 hour chart instead. So there'll be no daily chart today, but it's pretty much the exact same chart. I just, like I said, I need this high in here. This way I can run the running average, which is automated. My computer says, okay, I got two levels. These are the two levels. I want to find the first one and whatever the first one is what I run the average from. The first one I found was 35.399 and it's running its moving average from that point, which was of course resistance now on two different occasions. You can also see the pattern here of these uh, lower highs and lower lows. It's most likely probable, well, it's definitely probable, that it will make another lower high. Even if it gets up to like 31 and change, that's still that of a lower high. Within this 18 average band, same thing here. You get above it, you come back to it to find support, but unable to break this resistance. And then when this level gave in, boom, down she went. I was also mentioning things about all these uh, symmetrical triangles that occurred. And of course, that pattern uh, did break out to uh, the downside. Let's uh, adjust this uh, time frame out again to the 43-hour uh, chart, which means the uh, second half of the chart is going to look like this. But what I want to do is I uh, want to take a look at this within, well, first, before we do that, I want to adjust the Fibonacci from that low. So we'll take a look at it first on this angle here. So the Fibonacci lines have changed. 
So the lows of uh, 2612 is in place with this high. So therefore, this uh, support level came in, then you found resistance at this area, but then of course, this last week, it has broken through. So the area here of 29 and a third, which was support, is now that of a level of resistance. So let's take a look at the same time frame with the 43 hour chart. There we have it. There's the same little breakdown pattern as it is played out, which is not the first time this has happened. It's actually the, really the third recently when we look at this on the weekly time frame because, like I'm saying, it broke through this level here, so move from here to here failed. But at the same point, the move from here to here, here failed here, and it just went back to the low. The move from here to here failed uh, pretty much in here, yet it just comes back down to the low again. It's in the sideways consolidation. Question is, what's the breakout level, breakdown level going to be? And for this, we're going to use Fibonacci upside as well as Fibonacci downside. So we're going to do it here on a spreadsheet. Now within this, what we're going to do for uh, logarithmic Fibonacci for the upside is take the calculation of high divided by low to the power of the Fibonacci percentage, and it starts at 1.618, and you multiply it again by its low. Okay, so therefore what we need to do in here is put in a low, put in a high. So we look at this chart, what are the key levels? Well, we have the levels here of 2610, and we have this range, which is roughly in the area of 34.67, really 35 even. So therefore, what we'll do is uh, we'll go back again to uh, the spreadsheet. We'll put in 26.10, put in 34.67. There we go. So now to get the upside Fibonacci level one, like we say, we take high divided by low, and we'll put this to the power of the Fibonacci retracement, which is 1.618. And you can put the other decimals in, but it really doesn't matter. And multiply this again by the low. So the first upside target would be in the area of uh, 41 and change. Now what we're going to do is put dollar signs amongst these B's so that I can copy and paste this and make it a little bit easier. So now each one of these numbers is going to stay 41.32, but I got to change the uh, Fibonacci level because the next one is 2.618. So that brings it to 40 or uh, 50.49. And the next one is 4.236. Now how do we get that number of 4.236? Well, I'll show you. You take 1.618033, which is that Fibonacci number, this to the power of 2 is that 2.618, and if we put it to the power of 3, there we have the 4.236. So there we have the upside Fibonacci. Now let's do downside levels. So for calculations, we need the inverse of what we did. So we instead of high divided by low, it's 1 divided by low divided by 1 divided by high. As the highest number of the two, 1 divided by low and 1 divided by high will be the low. And then you divide it all again by 1. So let's put a formula in for doing this. So what we need again, we need 1. So we need to do uh, 1 divided by, and then we do uh, 1 divided by the low. Okay. And then we divide that by 1 divided by the high. Okay. So when we do this, we're going to get 0 0.75 right now. We've got a long ways to go right now. So put this to the power of, again, 1.618. Okay, so we're, we're working fine right now. And uh, let me just make sure that the bed mass is working fine. It should be because exponents always, just to be safe, I'll do this. Put an extra bracket. Okay. So now we got to the power of that. Now we need to multiply it again by the low. So that's 1 divided by the high. And we get 2190. So that's an interesting number. So that would be the downside target 
on any move. Now, to, to verify these numbers, what has to make sense, or what has to be the exact same number, is the high, or the, yeah, the break it level, which is 4132. So let's take that 4132 and divide it by the uh, high, 1.19. So now we'll take the low, divided by the break it number. That really should be the same again, and it is. So we know we got the calculations correct. So what we'll do again is we'll copy and paste this through. We'll have the formulas done. We'll take a look at a, another one, a, uh, an, another couple of the time frames. So this one, so the two points, the level before that is uh, 60, 49. But what we're going to find out is that uh, the, the linear Fibonacci actually works better. That's what we're going to find out. So we got the uh, levels for that. Now let's do linear Fibonacci. And the, this one here, now here it's high divided by low to the power of Fib multiply low. This is high minus low multiply fib plus low. So it's got the same numbers, it's just you're multiplying instead of powering, adding, multiplying, or all changing. Easy enough. Okay, so we do uh, high divided by low. Okay. Multiply, or multiply the fib number, 1.618, and then we'll add the low again. And that gives us a level of 30 this in here. Let's put this into two decimals. Okay, again, we'll put this in dollar signs so that uh, I can copy. This is for copying and pasting, so it always looks at this number. And then we'll just change this to 2.61 and 4.236. And then the same thing for the downside, you're basically doing the inverse again. But what we also know, too, is that if level 1 is going to be a difference of, well, in this case, we know from the uh, breakdown high that it's got to go up 1 point, it's 1 1.15 difference. So therefore, another way of writing this is taking the low and dividing it by E6 divided, or this here, which is actually a lot easier than the formula that I had just given. Uh, so again, we'll take uh, the dollar signs on this. And then this should give us all the numbers down to below. So our spreadsheet is done. Excellent. So therefore, within this range of uh, around 26 and close to 35, the next breakdown level is about 22 on this and 21. So let's just verify it uh, a little bit better as well. Let's uh, take a look, for example, at this level to this level. We had this little range in here, and then it broke down. So therefore, if Fibonacci was good, it should get a number somewhere around 26 because that's where it bottomed. Okay, so what was the low? Well, the low was 32, 32. The high was 49.81. So let's put 49.81 in here. And downside fits at 24.74. And that wasn't close. Downside fib here said 26.56. And that was close. The next level below that is 20.61. Okay, let's take a look at this now again on the shorter term time frame. And we'll go back to the uh, six hour chart and see how well it worked within this range now. So what's the range in here? Well, the top part of it, let's just take a, a, a blind eye look, uh, 3220, we'll say. And then this low in here, 3133. So 3220, 3133. So 3133, 3220. So on this level here, the downside Fibonacci will copy this and... Uh, Paste it in here and see how well these levels worked out. Okay, so 3082, which was pretty much this line in here. It uh, obviously was an area where it supported from and then made the lower high broke down. 30 even, which is pretty much right in here, which was an area that it stabilized at. And then 2881. 
This is another area that has stabilized that, but it's finding resistance within this area now. So what we could do is we could try to find level 4 now and see where the next level would work. So we'll just put in level 4. And now we have to know, well, what's the number after 4.236, though? Well, if we know, one way we can do it is to the power, multiply it to 1.618 to the power of 4. And there we have it. So now we can see the next downside target within this. Do the calculation. That would bring us to a objective down to 2705 as the uh, next uh, short-term level. So that's a little bit of uh, some uh, Fibonacci upside and downside movement. And let's finish it off within now the uh, gold to silver ratio. Here's what we got. We got a key low here. This was the February highs of gold and silver of 2012. Then last summer, when silver bottomed at 26, gold bottoming as well, the ratio topped. So therefore, we have this move from point A to point B, and it's been staying within it. But since it broke down in here in the late August, early September, it's been doing nothing but going in a neutral sideways consolidation, making patterns of what was an original higher low from this low, which was expected to be of made. And then you expected to make a lower high, which you did. You didn't know what you were going to make at this point because it was easy to make a higher low. But technically, it actually made a lower low. But in my book, that's a matching low. And then it made a higher high, higher low. So now you see we got this one higher high, higher low. It was looking as if the possibility for this to be a failed breakdown was in play, especially when it had multiple periods, which was four, uh, and really two breaks above this level. So you had this break in here, and then you had this break here, two breaks above this part here, that uh, it was looking good, but then as it was breaking down, you can see the moves of this being the possible failed breakout. Obviously, this was a possible failed breakdown as well. So now that we see what we see within this, We've already established a resistance level uh, roughly at around 56, which is a key mark. Therefore, holding and staying above here for a decent amount of time should endure a test of the 59.23 level. And obviously, any time this goes higher, we would expect gold and silver to go lower. There is already a decent sized shot as we look at this on the weekly time frame that uh, we could be breaking down below, and then the yeah, other small short-term uh, Fibonacci levels at around maybe 20, or support levels around 24-ish area, but it does seem the low 20s is the next key area, 21, 22. After all, the Fibonacci that I've been using for a long time is the levels from 4 to 8, which is the uh, significant uh, Signif the significant ones for a while. Now, this is 1047, 1447, and the next one after this is uh, 4836, around that area. So, therefore, we obviously have a hard time holding this 3140, so the next support level amongst this is uh, 21 as well. There's no guarantees that's going to take place, but we've already seen last week's video, the Dow to uh, silver ratio wouldn't be a surprise if, uh, if we give a few percentage points within the Dow, which would make a move to 20 possible, but nothing that's guaranteed at the same point. What I'm looking for is for this to hold and stay above this level for a month or so, month and a half, and then... Uh, the conviction for this to be resuming its bull market and most likely at least testing this 50 high, but probably well breaking it, which is what bull markets do. 20 minute video, which is a little more than what I wanted to expect, but just a little bit. Thank you for tuning in today and uh, have yourself a magnificent week. Bye bye.